På vår studieresa till Japan så besökte vi Sony Computer Science Laboratories, förkortat Sony CSN, under ledning av den karismatiske doktor Hirokai Kitano. Labbet grundades 1988 och var i början datacentriskt, men nu handlar forskningen mycket mer om hur vi som människor ska kunna interagera sömlöst med tekniken. So, Dr. Kitano, when will, we, when will we see the first product coming out as a result of the research from Sony Computer Science Lab? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, there, there are already products that actually came out from the research result. Actually, you know, we have uh, uh, some of the operating system actually use the PlayStations uh, on the uh, using a cell chip. And that has been uh, one of the first results. Okay, um, so. and uh, I know you're a visionary person, so I have some questions about that. What will the robot look like 10 years from now, do you think? Well, actually, a robot will be diversified, actually. So, like, uh, you know, people might have, like, a humanoid robot, a wheelbase robot, but actually a uh, humanoid will be just one type of robot. Like, a so robot will fit into the uh, kind of environment, like, uh, you know, and the shape and the forms that actually will be fitted to the specific purpose. So, like, uh, we actually have a, a few a robot actually, in the uh, uh, Fukushima uh, nuclear reactor. So, like, a researcher developing a robot actually fit to that environment because that how they, that the location they, you know, maneuver. So, like you know the shape actually depends on the you know, how you want to use the robot so like a robot is actually just a category right. of the technology rather than the specific instance Bi biosensors within our bodies will that be quite common and when do you think well, so uh, actually, uh, some of the sensory system actually is very sophisticated, and I think if we can get like uh, you know in inspiration from the human biological, uh, you know, uh, mechanism, I think you know we can actually significantly improve the sensitivity of the sensor, and you know how that actually translates into the robotics or other, uh, you know, products that yet to be seen. And uh, what about your energy situation in Japan? How will you solve that after the Fukushima tragedy? Yeah. Uh, actually, the energy situation is a, a very interesting topic, actually. We lost 30% uh, of electricity supply because we had to shut down the entire nuclear reactor. And there is only two reactors you know, OE, which is an upside of the Kyoto, which is operating. But uh, you know, within a few months, that will be shut down because of regular inspections. And it's politically very difficult to restart anything at this moment. So, like, a Japanese actually have to really depend on the uh, uh, liquid natural gas for the time being. But a lot of effort actually on the energy uh, and energy saving. And that actually had a significant impact. So, like, we thought, everyone thought that we are going to have a major blackout last summer. We didn't. Because of the energy saving effort to actually reduce energy consumption, uh, you know, twenty percent or more, without significant, sac you know, sacrifice in daily life. So like uh, that's actually the, the key, and then we can start have like a uh, 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 quite a bit of uh, mega solar system or a windmill or in the other system. So I, I think we can survive with the energy. You get a little tip from me. You can skip the heating on the toilet seats. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow! All right, 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 right. That, that's uh, some people argue that's too much. Yes. Well, thank you. Very okay. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.